What's going on guys? This is Chandler Smith and I'm here to report that we are in a recession. First off, stay calm. In this video, we're gonna talk about what that means, how we got here, and what's going to happen next. And most importantly, what that means for you and what you should do when it comes to investing in real estate. So with all of that being said, let's jump into it. All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, I've been investing in real estate for the last nine plus years. I own 180 units of residential real estate. I also own two larger storage unit complexes, and I'm in the process of building my dream home. So when it comes to understanding everything I can about the economy, interest rates, the housing market, inflation, and everything else under the sun, I do whatever I can to try and stay somewhat up to date so that I can make educated decisions when it comes to my personal investments. The goal of this video is going to be to let you know what I think is currently happening and what I plan on doing next to make sure that I protect the assets I have and continue to acquire new assets as it makes sense. In order to do this, I want you to understand a couple key points and I wanna share a story with you. This year, I bought a boat for the first time ever. Now, I've never owned a boat and I've never driven a boat other than a drift boat that didn't really have a motor, but I don't think that counts. Now, it was extremely exciting to be able to purchase the boat, hook it onto the back of my truck and also film a couple TikToks. However, the first day I took it out, and I wasn't so foolish as to take it out on my own, I actually took an instructor with me, and he was showing me how to properly bring the boat in and trailer the boat. Now, there was a little bit of wind, and I was pretty confident. You know, I've owned multiple cars over the years. I feel like I'm a pretty good driver. And so I hopped into the driver's seat, and he kind of coached me through what I needed to do, and I brought it in to try and trailer the boat. Now, what's kind of interesting about the boat is you turn it, and there's not really a very quick response, which is kind of frustrating with how much of the boat costs. I expected it to do what I told it, but it just doesn't do that. As a matter of fact, you can turn the wheel all the way over and it still takes a couple seconds before it even starts to respond, especially at low speeds. And so when you're trying to bring it in, you see that maybe you're going this way and so you crank the wheel and nothing happens. So then you really start to crank the wheel and still nothing happens and then something happens. Actually, a lot happens. And so then you're cranking it the other way and then it's still going this way. So you're cranking and you're cranking and you're cranking and you're freaking out because it's still going this way and then all of a sudden it drastically turns this way and you're completely sideways and you smash it into the dock and it costs quite a bit of money to fix. I'm not necessarily sharing this from personal experience. Anyways, my point is it takes a long time for it to respond, but when it responds, it responds. And then when you try to correct, it doesn't correct, and then it corrects. <laughs> now, here's the situation that we're currently in. We are on a massive boat that takes even longer to respond. I mean, we're talking months and maybe even years. And we've got a very, very faithful captain at the stern of that boat. All men and women created by the Go, oh, you, know you know the thing. Now, it would be a uh, gross overstatement to say he is the only one running the boat. We've even got Mr. Powell, who's doing his best to try and steer the boat and keep us on track. Not only do we have these incredible men that are leading our boat, but we've got an incredible woman named Nancy Pelosi that somehow always is able to know how much that boat is able to correct. And she's even been in the process of buying lots of life jackets. And if you don't get my analogy, maybe just Google it and do a little bit of research. But that's not important. What is important is that when it comes to all of these moving parts, there is a lot that goes into our economy. And the truth is, I do believe some part of every government official really does want to try and do what's best for our society. Now, there's a cynical side of me that also believes they're very self-motivated, but we're not gonna talk about that in this video. What we are going to talk about is the fact that our government has spent a lot of money and things were going good. And so we spent a lot more money and a lot more money. And during that process, we also had the Fed who was handing out money for literally nothing, which I loved. Low interest rates were absolutely incredible. However, I think everyone forgot that we were on a boat and that we were steering like this and we felt like we were going the right direction 
and now we're going sideways. And now everybody on the boat is going like this. This is what we are doing with government spending. This is what we're doing with interest rate hikes. This is what we're doing with a myriad of things. And the thing that makes this so complicated is when I was driving my boat, it was hard enough to know what we were doing just with one person steering the boat. But we've got lots of different factors that are at play and all of them are steering and all of them take a while to see what's happening. And then it also takes a while to correct. And that's kind of where our boat is at. Now I've dove way too deep into this analogy. So let me talk a little more not analogy. Right now, interest rates have been hiked like crazy. And there was another 0.75% interest rate hike just this last week. Now, a lot of people think that the housing interest rates follow perfectly these interest rates that are talked about, but that's not technically true. There are lots of different things that are at play. And while these interest rates were pumped, we also reported that we are in a recession because GDP was down for two consecutive months. But Joe Biden and pretty much everybody else in that general area is saying we're actually not in a recession to the point where not only are they confused on the proper definition of a recession, but Wikipedia has shut down the ability to change the definition of recession because nobody knows what's going on. But if I had to bet, I would say we're headed towards a recession or technically in a recession, or maybe we're not. I don't know because they keep changing the Wikipedia definition and that's where I get all my information. Just kidding, kind of. Here's the crazy thing. We had this 0.75% interest rate hike by Mr. Powell. It just sounds nice, Mr. Powell. <laughs> <laughs> but we also reported two negative months of GDP growth, which technically should, well, we've covered the recession thing. Anyways, <laughs> while all of this happens, interest rates on housing actually fell. They fell from 5.54% down to 5.22%, down to 5.13%, which is actually an absurd and insane drop, especially considering that the Fed just hiked rates. On top of this, we had yet another month saying that inflation is going crazy, and this interest rate hike was just us cranking the wheel back the other direction to try and hedge inflation and everything else that's going on right now. So now that I've given you my layman's term understanding of what's going on, you're probably a little more confused than you were when you started, just like I am. <laughs> but I promise you, even though my ship is sideways and I'm willing to recognize it, I'm about to straighten it out and help you understand what this means and what you should do next. The only thing I ask you to remember to do is make sure that you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell. And now let's really dive into things. Here are the things that I know to be true that you should hold on to with every fiber of your being. Number one, rents are not going down. And even if they do, it's not going to be drastic because there is a substantial need for housing. And with interest rates where they're at, they may go up, they may go down, but they're not going to go down a lot with everything that's going on. As a matter of fact, I think that we're going to see interest rates on homes continue to go up. And I think there might be little periods where you can capitalize on lower interest rates. And so as you're purchasing properties, make sure you do just that. However, you can use rising interest rates as a great piece of fear and urgency when it comes to finding incredible deals on cash flowing assets. Which leads me to my next point, which is cash flow is king. Now guys, I've been saying this for years and it's hilarious because now that we are officially, well not officially, but now that we're in a recession, self-proclaimed by me, there are lots of people that are leaving comments on my channel saying, oh, your ship is going to sink. No, we knew that the market is always going to do this. Did I have the wind at the back of my sails for years and years and years as I purchased real estate and it shot up in value? Yes, I did. And that's been absolutely incredible, but we all knew it couldn't last for long. And that's why I've always purchased property based on the cash flow, based on locking in good interest rates and based on holding to those numbers so that even when I saw a deal that might go up in value by a lot, if it didn't have the cash flow that I wanted, I wasn't going to buy it because I always knew something like this was going to happen. So when it comes to the properties I currently own, I'm in a great place because I've got locked in interest rates for long periods of time. And I have properties that not only have gone up a lot in value, but if they go down in value, I don't care. One, because they went up a lot, but two, because they are cash flowing like crazy. And even if rents do correct, which I don't think they will, as a matter of fact, I think we're even going to see them follow inflation, which is going to continue to go up because even though we're steering the wheel back the other direction, 
We've got to pay the piper for the low interest rates and the massive spending that the government's done over the last couple of years. Now, this is for the properties I own and it's great news that I've purchased them this way, but I know a lot of people are saying, Chandler, what should we do next? Should I still invest in real estate? Yes, but everyone asks this as if they just need to buy what's on the MLS at the price that it's on. And if you do that, the answer is no. And it's always been no. In order for you to buy in this market, just like any market, you need to make sure that the numbers work. And if you don't know how to make the numbers work and go through that process of due diligence and understanding the rents in your area and understanding what role interest rates play on purchasing that property and what purchase price you need and how your expenses come into play and everything else that goes into the due diligence of purchasing a property, if you're confused by any of that or all of that, but you wanna start investing in real estate, I am here to help. Now you can get all of that information on my YouTube channel, but I've spent literally days, weeks, even months putting together an incredible course that's going to show you step-by-step -step how to analyze a property and purchase it so that you can have a cash flowing asset. So if you've got money you need to place or you're trying to get into investing in real estate, I promise you that course is the best and I'm just about to bump the price again. So if you wanna pick it up before I do, make sure you click the link down in the description and use the $50 off code. Now, I don't wanna get off track, but I know a lot of people are nervous. If you're just starting, go check out all of my other videos and subscribe to the channel because we're gonna talk you through this entire process. The thing I love about the course is it just gives you the step-by-step -step process and we just added monthly calls so that if you've got questions for your particular situation or your area, we've got a private Discord and monthly calls where you can come to me with those questions. Next thing I know to be true is there are always going to be good deals if you know where to look and you know what you're doing. On top of that, you always need to prepare for the worst. It's going to happen. Bad things are going to happen. You need to have proper reserves. You need to have good fixed interest rates. You need to buy properties with good cash flow. But if you've prepared and set aside money like I've been telling you to do for literally years and purchasing properties properly like I've been telling you to do for literally years, then you're gonna be okay. And if you're at the front end of this journey, everyone thinks, oh, I need to wait for a recession. Well, the recession is here and guess what's happened? Interest rates are through the roof other than you know, the correction we've got right here a little bit. And prices are through the roof and they're starting to bend a little bit, but right now both of those are very high. And so on the front end of this recession, it's not necessarily a great time to capitalize on deals, especially on the MLS. Now you can still find good deals by using that fear and urgency to find off-market deals, but I don't think we're gonna see actual good deals on the MLS. And if we do, we're still, I don't know, maybe even six months to a year out if we see them at all. What people need to understand is you don't capitalize on this big known recession where everyone's like, hey, it's here. There are great deals on real estate. Everybody go buy it because it's gonna be incredible. No, the reason people capitalized on other recessions or other opportunities is because everyone else was scared. Everyone else was nervous about what was coming next. And that's what makes this game so hard, but not hard if you're always buying and you're always buying properly. And this is what I've been saying for years. So I'm telling you right now, the deals aren't going to get easier to find and the way that we've been finding them is going to change, but I promise you they're going to be there. Here's the last piece of advice that I have for you. Right now, everyone feels like the boat is going sideways and no one feels like the captain knows how much we need to correct or overcorrect or back correct or whatever. We just know there are going to be opportunities that some are going to capitalize on and some are going to miss out. And so if you can keep a level head, you can make sure you're not the one jumping off the ship, make sure that you're not the one panicking and slamming on the brakes or throwing the boat into reverse, but make sure that you're trying to figure out how far the boat's going to correct or recorrect. I guess what I'm trying to say is do everything you can to be just like Nancy Pelosi, where you know exactly what's coming. Just try and do it without insider information because technically that's illegal, unless you're a government official. Just kidding guys, kind of. What I'm saying is don't panic, try and see what's happening next and keep a level head and buy properties that have proper returns. I haven't owned real estate through an actual recession or an actual downturn. I've just had the wind at my back and so I'm gonna get to fare this with you and I'm gonna do everything I can to share with you what I'm seeing, what I'm doing. Probably gonna make some mistakes along the way, but the only person that's truly going to lose is the guy that slams it into the reverse 
and sits on the sideline. Because if you're sitting on the sideline, I promise you, you're not gonna learn anything and you're definitely not gonna put your money in the right place. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to remember to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the future videos. Thanks guys, have a great day. Thank you.